This is Marketing Jam, a podcast featuring the brightest minds in Canadian marketing. So my name is Tamir, uh, and I lead Amazon's advertising business here in Canada. Okay. So our job is basically to connect brands uh, with Amazon shoppers in ways that add value to a customer's shopping and entertainment experience. Okay. Uh, and we do that you know, on Amazon.ca, on IMDb, on Twitch, on our mobile app, uh, and across the web in third-party okay. apps as well. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. And so, uh, jumping right in, I, I need to know, what are the top five apps that you use on your phone? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have to say the Amazon mobile app, so okay. that'll be one. So, okay. uh, I would say Twitter, yep. Waze, definitely helps my commute, okay. uh, Uber, when I don't want to drive, and then I'll give you one random one that yeah. you probably maybe don't use. Uh, that's team stuff. Okay. And so, this is what we use to manage my hockey team, basically. Okay. So, yeah. making sure we have enough guys to actually show up and yes, everybody yes. knows who's on you know, beer duty and yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a good one to try. Okay. And why did you go Waze versus Google Maps? Uh, you know, I've, I mean, I think ultimately the back end is probably very similar, but yeah. uh, I just find the experience to be more seamless. Okay. Uh, I don't want to be looking at my phone when I'm driving yeah. and maybe the voice directions and just a quick glance at a screen I find just to be super clear and convenient. Okay. Yeah. And the Amazon app? Yeah. Tell me about what, what do you use it for and tell me some of the, the, the cool features that maybe some people may not know about on the Amazon app. Yeah. Uh, I think some, uh, one of the things that people may not be as familiar with is if you're, you're looking for a product, uh, mm -hmm. whether you're in a store and you want to read reviews or yeah. whether you're, uh, you just come across something at a friend's house and yeah. you want to know how you get it, yeah. uh, there's actually a little camera icon on the Amazon mobile app. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, you, know, you can actually pull up your phone, mm -hmm. it'll scan that product and pull that product page up on Amazon. Uh, so great way to save you time and, and figure out how you get that product you know, showing, showing up at your house. Okay. And, and tell me about, uh, you know, you're a Canadian, sure. you live in yes. Canada, you're from th this area. Yes. Um, headquarters is in Seattle though for yes, Amazon. Yes, it is. How do you deal with when you scan something and it's only available in the American store or it's not available? Yeah. Like, is, it, is it something that you guys are just trying to get more availability in Canada or is it just a constant thing that you guys are dealing with all the time? Yeah, you know, I, I'd say the experience has come so far yeah. in the last few years. And, yeah. you know, when I, when I left Canada in 2007, mm -hmm. Amazon essentially sold books and DVDs yeah. uh, here in Canada. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I came back, I was kind of surprised at how far things had developed. You know, yeah. today we sell everything from toys to musical instruments yeah. to diapers to... Salsa. Uh, I got salsa. Oh, there you go. Salsa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's a huge area of focus for us. One yeah. of the core pillars of our business is selection. We want, okay. we want the customers to be able to come to Amazon yeah. and find anything they're looking for. So yeah. that definitely drives and motivates us every day. Okay. Yeah. I, for example, I have a retail client, 10,000 okay. Villages. Uh, their U.S. store had all their products on Amazon, yeah. and now they're just starting to do it in Canada because they're realizing they had such a major request of people preferring Amazon versus mm. their own proprietary oh, e-commerce platform. Yeah, it, you know, it's a it's a trusted experience to shop. Customers, yeah. you know, have their login information already there. Yeah. They don't have to enter in payment information. There's reviews. Um, you know, we, we find that, uh, you know, customers really enjoy that shopping experience, yeah. which is our goal. Yeah. So, so dissect me. Like, I'm, I'm what you just described because I prefer to shop. Like, I always double check to be like, is that same product? I've seen their e-commerce thing and I get an ad to their e-commerce platform. Yeah. But I always check if it's on Amazon first because I'm a Prime member. Thank you. And my information's already there. So, but is there much more to it than that? Is it just because I... I, I just like it. I just love. I love that there's a trusted factor. I love that I can sure. return it. There's that whole. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think if you were to sum up our approach, yeah. um, it, it's it's that our our goal is to be the most customer focused, customer obsessed business in the world. Okay. Uh, we start with the customer and work backwards in everything that we do, and it's that focus. Uh, to delight customers and invent on their behalf that drives and moves us forward every day. Um, and so, you know, it, it makes me feel good to hear that you're a customer and that, you know, you, you definitely value that shopping experience from reviews to, to everything else. Um, and so I think that's, that's what we're focused on. And, 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 you know, when we think about creating great experiences for customers on the retail side of the business, mm -hmm. it's often anchored in a couple of key tenants. It's yeah. around uh, great prices, uh, simpler, more convenient shopping yeah. experiences, um, and then selection, adding as many products to the store as possible. Okay. Now, um, do you guys do this on purpose? Sometimes you'll say it'll take like four days to ship and then it arrives like the next day. <laughs> is that an intentional <laughs> thing or is that just by chance sometimes it happens? Uh, I, is that part of the delight factor? Well, yeah. I think our, our goal is obviously to get, the, the, get that product in the customer's hands as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah. And okay. so we want to make sure that we're setting the right expectations with customers. Yeah. Uh, but the goal is to get there as fast as we can. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm in I'm in Langley, British Columbia, which yeah, is a beautiful. suburb outside of Vancouver. Yeah. And I ordered a car seat because our, our car seat had expired and we realized we needed this right away. Yeah. And and Toys R Us or Babies R Us R Us was already closed. Okay. So I ordered it and I was thinking, all right, Rose, it'll be here in a few days. It says, and then the next day it arrived. Like the next day. That's great. Yeah. With yeah. a guy who had a little clipboard, he drove to our place and <laughs> yeah. And and sometimes I've ordered stuff and it comes that night. The wow. same day stuff, right? So I think it's yeah. becoming more and more a thing. Yeah, th you know, we we now offer free same day delivery for yeah. Prime members in Toronto yeah. and Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, free next day in Ottawa, Montreal, Calgary, Edmonton. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you know, there's a fulfillment center in Delta, uh, not probably not okay. too far from yeah. you. And yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's awesome to hear that you're having a good yeah. experience and getting the product. And the driver you. loved it. He showed me the app that he had. He's oh, like, oh great. yeah, this is my route tonight, and it kind of mapped <laughs> it all out for him. And, yeah, very cool. Yeah. So uh, 2018. Yeah, uh, we're, we're walking into it. We're already in March, but what do you see the rest of the year when it comes to marketing trends? Yeah, and, and from your your seat where you stand, one of the things that's happening, which I think is is really interesting and getting the attention of a lot of marketers, is that um, e-commerce is really approaching that inflection point here in Canada. So, 66% of all retail growth in this country is going to be driven by e-commerce over the next few years. So, to put that into context, um, just the incremental growth, just the growth in each of the next few years. Uh, is more than Canadians spend in a year at, at Tim Hortons. It's more than we spend on beer. Uh, and so that has some pretty significant implications yeah. for businesses and for marketers. And so uh, we're seeing e-commerce marketing essentially emerge as a distinct discipline, you know, yeah. alongside search and social, for example. And uh, we're seeing an entire industry emerge to help these brands make that transition. Yeah. And at Amazon, we're also eager to help. And uh, you know, we've, we've found that there are a few approaches that have worked really well for us and have worked really well for the brands we work with to help them take a more customer focused and customer first uh, approach to, yeah. to doing business. Okay. And, and when Amazon looks at that, what are some of the things that you guys are doing or that are coming down the pipe that you're allowed to share? I know there's <laughs> some stuff behind the curtain that we got to be careful about. Yeah. But but what are you allowed to share today for, for our listeners? Sure. Uh, you know, one thing that I think is really, uh, really kind of neat, um, uh, we just recently launched something uh, on our U.S. mobile app experience mm -hmm. called AR View. Essentially, okay. it's an augmented reality experience. Yeah. Uh, what we find is that there are certain products, maybe home products or kitchen mm -hmm. products, yeah. that customers have a harder time buying online because yeah. they want to be able to see and handle it and like figure out how it fits. Yeah, or, yeah, or a pillow or yeah. you know, a juicer. Is it going to yeah. fit on my countertop? Yeah. Uh, and so this tool essentially lets that customer place this product virtually in their home. They can wow. move it around and yeah. see really, does this fit? Is, is yeah. it for me? So yeah. uh, we're excited about that. It, yeah. it goes back to our core focus of reducing friction and making yeah. things easier for customers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. very cool. Are you guys ever going to get into the Blue Apron or you know, Fresh Prep world as well, like doing the packaged meals, or is that on your scope at all? Uh, you know, I don't know. You don't know, okay. Yeah, I can't, Anything's I can't possible. comment on I mean, that. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I okay. I don't know. Okay, okay, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of, I have this meal delivery that comes okay. a few times a week and it's amazing. Uh, but right now I, I have multiple platforms I need to manage, but it'd be amazing if there was just one. Sure. Right? So one day maybe there'll be the one website to rule them all, right? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we love to get feedback from customers and yeah, that, yeah. that's what drives us and helps us figure out where we want to focus next. And okay. so, it, that's, it, yeah, helpful to hear about your experiences yeah. for sure. So when we look at um, kind of the person in your shoes and, and, sure. and someone is listening to this and how does someone get to where you are today? What kind of advice would you give this young person or, or maybe person that's like, I want to be you one day? Yeah. What would you say? You know, I, I just met um, a couple of, of, of folks who, you know, a couple of years out of school mm -hmm. and uh, are, I love just the entrepreneurial drive that so yeah. many of them have. And yeah. they see these opportunities to... Uh, to do some amazing things and mm -hmm. to serve customers in new ways and take advantage of the technology. Yeah. I'd say one of the pieces of advice that I'd give folks is, um, is really to, to think and act like an owner every okay. day. Uh, it, act, it doesn't matter what your role is, mm -hmm. but act as though you're an owner of the business. And yeah. what that really means is um, you have to be comfortable sacrificing short-term gain, mm -hmm. short gains uh, for the long-term health of the business. Yeah. And you have to be comfortable doing things that are right for the company yeah. that may not be right for you and your yeah. individual goals. Yeah. And I think folks that do that, folks who have the attitude um, that they, nothing is, nothing is, is above them, or that mm -hmm. you know, they don't say this isn't my job. Mm -hmm. I think those are the folks that, that ultimately uh, you know have the right attitude to really thrive mm -hmm. and succeed. And mm -hmm. um, you know it's very difficult to coach that. And yeah. so I think that's the that's certainly something that that we look for and is important for us as a core value of of, of us at Amazon. Okay. And if you were to speak to like a business owners that, that to teach them how to embrace where Amazon is going and where e-commerce is going, yeah. what are some tips and advice you'd give them to make sure that like, hey, don't be fearful of this. Yeah. Here's how you can embrace the change. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I would say 
the, the first and most important thing is that customer obsession piece. Okay. And uh, really deeply understanding the core needs of your customer yeah. and working backwards from there to, to come up with solutions that are, are going to address their, yeah. their needs, um, inventing on behalf of those customers. And so I think it's about, if you're a big kind of established brand, yeah. I think it's about putting yourself in the shoes of that challenger brand, you yeah. know, hitting a reset button and, and you know, going through that thought exercise yeah. as if you were operating with a blank canvas. Yeah. Um, and don't let your constraints kind of hold you back and really think about what are the core needs that you can address um, uh, to help your customers move forward. And what we found is that e-commerce marketing is a really effective vehicle uh, accomplishing that. Yeah. Um, it helps businesses uh, lead with the right types of insights. It helps them pick the right moments and get the right message to the right customer at the right time. Yeah. Uh, it helps them create really compelling and rich brand experiences and ultimately it makes buying their products more convenient and easy for customers. Yeah. And so all of those things are, are really important. Yeah. It's wild every Christmas and Black Friday, of course, in Canada to get to see the stats afterwards in the Global Mail and, and other publications publishing the increase of you know money spent on Amazon and purchases online versus retail shops that are actually less and less money is being spent. So you guys are a, a major contributor to where people are going and spending their time. Well, you know, I, I think we're certainly growing as e-commerce continues yeah. to grow, but you know, brick and mortar is still growing in Canada yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's all about giving customers more choice, yeah. uh, which ultimately will produce better experiences for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so we're excited that you know, 20 million Canadians are going to shop online this year, 80% uh -huh. of the internet population. Yeah. Uh, and so it's exciting to, to feel as though you know, that experience that I craved yeah. in the, when I was living in the US that I yeah. wanted for Canada, it's actually here. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. As, a, as a Prime member, I just discovered I also have access to Prime TV. Is that what's called? Prime Video? Prime Video. Prime yeah. Video. And Mr. Bean is on there. Oh, so my, that's big. My 11 year old son <laughs> loves it. So I, I didn't realize that. So And now I have Prime Video on my Apple TV and all I right. can watch all these. I, it's a nice benefit of being a Prime member. Yeah. Let alone the great shipping rates and often free shipping. So, yeah. So. No, it's a, it, it's a great part of the Prime membership. Yeah. Uh, I'd encourage you to watch Sneaky. Pete, not for your son, oh, okay, not for your 11-year-old okay, okay. son, uh, but for you, yes. it's a really good show. Uh, yeah, okay. it, it stars uh, Giovanni Ribisi, uh, okay. and it's a really good show. Okay. Uh, season two, I think, is going to start pretty soon. Um, and then just this past holiday, yeah. uh, we actually launched Prime Music as well. Oh, so wow. okay. Prime members in Canada now get access to uh, ad-free streaming of over a million songs what? as part of your membership. So Is it an app I download? Yeah, yeah okay. so check that out. Prime Music. Yes. That's great to know. So one of the things I find fascinating, you, op you guys open up a shop, bricks and mortar, you, uh, an Amazon store where you, they sense when things are picked up and, and, and it was amazing to see, it was designed to have no lineup shopping but there was a massive lineup of everyone who wanted to experience it. So, um, any, any talks of it coming to Canada? Uh, yeah, I mean I, I can't speak to any future yeah, plans yeah, yeah, yeah. with it but it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing shopping experience. The, the store is called Amazon Go yeah. and we just opened the first store in Seattle uh, okay. to the general public and okay. the gen basically the idea of it is uh, it's a store with no lines, yeah. no checkout, yeah. uh, and you just walk out. Mm. And so, you know, here downtown in Toronto, it might take you 20 minutes door to door to get yeah. grab lunch. Yeah. Um, at this store, whether you want to buy lunch or a meal kit, yeah. you walk in, grab it, and walk out in a couple minutes. That's wow. it. Uh, and so, for me, the, the, the part of that experience that feels so amazing is not the technology behind yeah. it, it's the fact that when you're in the store, you don't feel any of that. Yeah. It feels like a normal store, and the only yeah. way that something hits you that this isn't normal is when yeah. you walk out, you get this brief moment of panic that you forgot to pay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it takes, you know, visiting the store a few times to realize that that's just okay, it's part of the experience. Yeah. But um, I think customers will get over that once they realize how much time they get back in their day, yeah. just waiting in line, you know, yeah. buying lunch or a snack or something like that. Yeah. So being a father of, of three young children, so I have a two-year-old, four-year-old, and 11-year-old, okay. I don't often get out to the mall to go shopping, So I okay. think, which is fine, and, and, and maybe if I was, had no kids, I would, and occasionally, I, I did recently because I had to go to the Apple store, and okay. I went to a few shops, but I find sometimes going on the Amazon app or online is like going to a mall. Hmm. I can look around, and, and they suggest things for me, and I can kind of check out what's trending, what new products are. I got a new down jacket on there recently, All right. and it was <laughs> ready it was, for spring if it ever comes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I just, I just found it like a, a mall experience. So of, of all uh, websites, I can see VR actually being the most kind of hmm. fitting for that. So yeah, was, yeah so. Yeah, I mean, our, our job is to create great shopping experiences for customers, regardless of where they shop. Yeah, uh, and that's 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 what we're focused on. Yeah, I love. I don't know if you guys saw this. There was a campaign where it was you get an Amazon purchase, 
and then you could return something used or uh, you know something like a like a used shirt or a donation mm -hmm. in the box, and then it would go to people who need jackets or blankets oh, and things like that. Actually, yeah. I hadn't seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. an amazing campaign. It was a, a few years ago. You guys did that. Okay. So, yeah, it was very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, recommended books or magazines that you consume? Yeah. Uh, one book that I really love, a marketing book that I would recommend for folks, is uh, it's called Made to Stick. Okay. Uh, and essentially, it looks at the psychology behind things like memory uh, okay. and applies that to a business context to help you understand, you know, why is it that some stories, some commercials yeah. uh, really resonate and will stick with people and they can remember yeah. details about it 20 years later yeah. and some things just go in one ear and yeah. are, out, are out the next. Like uh, Sapporo Ichiban, <laughs> that commercial was, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so what, you know, we can look at that and say that's a great ad, but yeah. why? Yeah. Uh, and so I really enjoyed that because it applied the science to marketing. Okay. Very cool. uh, so it's, it's a great read with okay. some really helpful examples. I'd, I'd look at that, yeah. That's great. Available on Amazon? Yes, for and sure. And Audible? Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, it is, correct. yes. That's Absolutely. Awesome. Any magazines, uh, other reading material that you? Uh, not necessarily a magazine, but one thing that I would I would definitely recommend for folks in the marketing yeah, space. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a blog slash podcast mm -hmm. uh, that's called Strategery, okay. uh, and uh, it I just find it to be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, so the content is updated weekly, mm -hmm. and it's essentially really a combination of sort of business and technology focus. Okay. And so you know this week they featured sort of a deep dive into Spotify and their yeah. business, and so they look at. Uh, basically, the underlying business model mm -hmm. uh, within these different business units that they look at, they compare it sort of against historical context. So, you know, what was similar 30 years ago? The world is completely different, but what was similar and what happened? Uh, and then sort of what is the social impact of that? How does that impact our lives day to day? Um, I just find it so thoughtful um, and thought provoking. So it's definitely one that I would recommend, either the blog or the podcast or both. Okay. And yeah. any other podcasts that you listen to? or um, I think that's the key one for me. Okay. Uh, so like you, so I, I've got a three-month-old okay. and a four-year-old. Yeah. Uh, and so, my, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a lot of sort of Dr. Seuss, yep. uh, Paw Patrol. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So there's a different type of insight you get from that, and I yes. think that I've got a lot of that in my head yeah, right now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Paw Patrol, oh, man. Uh, they, I, that's, that, they alone, that brand is fascinating, being yeah. the amount of toys and new vehicles that they get every yeah. season, right? And it's new a characters. nice Canadian success story, for yes. sure. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you guys would never sell in it? Like it seems like anything these days you can buy on Amazon, right? Is that kind of sky's the limit right now, or have you guys ever thought, okay, we could, that, no one's going to buy that online? I think we want to create safe uh, uh, shopping experiences yeah, for yeah. our customers, yeah. and so you definitely can't sell everything on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are products that that may be dangerous. Uh, you know, we certainly don't sell. Uh, you know, there are certain types of, of weapons that we would never no, sell on Amazon yeah. or, or, dr great. or drugs, for example. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, you know, it's about protecting the customer experience, yeah. uh, ultimately. Yeah. Um, so as someone, as a consumer, any advice on this? Like Sage is a good example. They're a mm. Vancouver company that sells essential oils. Okay. And I, and I like them, right? I trust them. I want to support local. Uh, but I don't want to go to a store. I don't have the time. And sure. I want to buy it on Amazon. But it's only, it, it's some other essential oils. But I don't want to get that. You know, there's that essential oil. So I'm like, Oof. I feel compelled to that. How do I, um, you know, what's, what's the call I can give to someone like Sage to go on to Amazon? Any advice what to tell them? Do I just... <laughs> Tweak them, tweet them, plug uh, them. I mean, I think as a as a customer, they're yeah. they're probably eager to get feedback from consumers. Yeah. And I, I think uh, you should share your own personal experiences and let okay. them know that um, you know you you want to be able to buy their products across a number of different yeah. uh, retail channels. Yeah. So I think just sharing that feedback um, mm -hmm. is, is helpful and we're, you know, we're adding new brands and new products to the store every day. Okay, okay. And warehouses right across the world now, I imagine, <laughs> right? Or in a cr the country. Yeah, I mean, okay. we, have, we have fulfillment centers uh, you know, in, in Toronto, uh, in the Vancouver area, um, and you know, we're, we're launching one in, in Calgary as well. Wow, okay. um, so it's, you know, it's, uh, yeah, we're excited about investing in Canada, and you know, we have over 8,000 employees now in this country. Wow, 8,000 employees, yeah. okay. Anything you want to leave people with, uh, the retailers in Canada, any, any kind of last messages to encourage them? And yeah, to, I think the one thing I would just say is, uh, you know, I think Canada is a really awesome place to, 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 to lean in and test. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that we have such phenomenal, the talent of the people in this country is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, what our consumer base shares a lot of characteristics with 
uh, Americans, mm -hmm. uh, but with also customers in all over the world. And mm -hmm. so what works here can scale and yeah. have an impact outside of our own borders. And mm -hmm. so I think that you know, as, as marketers and as businesses, I think we need to lean in to technological change. We need to lean, in, lean into e-commerce and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have an opportunity to play a really big leading role in that and in, in creating these customer-focused experiences. So you know, I, I'm excited to, to see how that develops over the next few years. That's awesome. And the last purchase you made on Amazon, do you remember what it was? Ooh, the last purchase I made on Amazon, I bought a new hockey bag. Okay. Uh, and so it's, my hockey bag smelled really bad and yeah. my wife's like, you can't keep that around the house anymore. Uh, so I bought a new bag. Uh, awesome. So that was the last thing I bought. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Well, thank you for joining cool. us on thank the Marketing you so much. Jam yeah. show. Uh, Appreciate it. Uh, this is us, uh, Marketing Jam here at DX3. Uh, some of the brightest and sharpest minds in retail and marketing here in Toronto. And we're happy to bring you uh, some of their insights and behind the scenes footage of uh, some of their thoughts, some of the, the apps they use, some of the insights of what they're seeing for this next year, and some great advice for retailers and people to keep customers uh, the main thing. So thanks again. Thank you. Cheers. Take care.